Steve Shitera, who's been our special correspondent on the beat. And of course, uh, now I'm joined in studio by Mr. Barnaba Korir in our quick fire segment, who is going to shed more light on the readiness and the Keep Kano Classic, basically, which we are hosting this Saturday at the Nyayo National Stadium. Uh, Mr. Korir, Hujambo. Welcome to the program for the second time I begin. I believe this year or last year you were here? Yeah, I was here last year, mm -hmm. but this is the fifth time that we are hosting this event in Kenya. Mm -hmm. yes. The fifth time, and basically, let's start from there. Uh, Saturday, all roads lead to the Nyayo National Stadium. How prepared are we? What's the state of our readiness as at now? Uh, up to this moment, uh, we are ready. We have uh, the team that came from uh, Europe to, to set up the, the system, the networking of the uh, host broadcasters and also the technical teams that are here. We have already put up everything in place, especially accommodation, transportation and any other uh, activity that is required uh, for the success of the event. So absolutely, we are ready. We are about 90% now. Our team is already uh, at the stadium. They were there uh, the whole of last week. And of course, uh, with the assistance of the, the director of the um, uh, DG, who is in charge of the stadiums, uh, Mr. Meto, and I want to assure the Kenyans that uh, by Saturday we'll be ready to host the event. By Saturday we'll be ready. And you're talking about stadium, there's a team here. And there's one question people, still, uh, people keep asking, and it's about the state of our facilities. The last four editions were held at Kasarani. And you'll agree with them even as we speak, we don't have a single athletics facility in this country. Uh, just a small correction. The first uh, edition was done at Nyao National Stadium, mm. uh, and the other three was in uh, Kasarani yeah, uh, sure. International Stadium. Mm. Uh, the state of facilities, I want to say that the government is doing its best to make sure that the infrastructure is put in place. You know, uh, the problem that we are facing is that, um, you know, there were so many activities that was going into different uh, sectors, especially the stadium across the country. Mm. And I'm sure this time around they are going to finalize the, the, the stadiums that have been constructed, especially in Nairobi. There is also Talanda Stadium which is coming. Already the refurbishment of the Kasaran International Stadium is going on, which will be really good for us if it is ready mm. by next year so that we can have now the sixth uh, uh, Kipkeno Classic. And of course, we are hoping that at some point in time, maybe in the near future, that it can be upgraded to Diamond League. And absolutely, that was going to be my next question. It seems you've read my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Probably what will it take? Because that's now a higher level of competition. Yes, absolutely, the higher level of competition. And uh, the world also is uh, seeing Kenya. We have had many uh, international sports activities going on. The other day we had the Savari Rally. We have had also uh, rugby uh, in this country. We have the best athletes. We have also good uh, rugby players, footballers. Mm -hmm. And this is the destination for sports activities in the country. And I'm sure this is the right uh, uh, direction uh, the country is taking to, to focus on sports and uh, other activities to enhance also of, uh, the economic uh, situation of the country. So we continue now enhancing the development of uh, sports infrastructure. It helps us now, especially track and field, mm -hmm. which is the dominant uh, uh, sport mm -hmm. in the country and also all over the world. Kenya is known because of athletics. And that's where the focus should be to ensure that that, that position that we have hold, yes. held for a long time is maintained. Uh, as you put it, uh, Korir, and our athletes actually have been good ambassadors, I would say that again. And you look at uh, the last two meets at Kasarani, we saw Fadio Manyala, our speedster, basically uh, winning that last year, actually won in the 100 meters. And the year before, actually he set his record as Africa's fastest man at Kasarani, probably going to race at Nyayo on Sunday. Could we see records tumble? Do you think uh, this offers our athletes probably an opportunity to do much better on home ground? There is always several factors, especially when it comes to Manyala. In fact, he's the one who has changed the dynamics of uh, sprints in this country. Yeah, sure. He has won uh, three times, and I hope that hopefully that is going to defend his title. And of course, performance is uh, directly uh, the results is directly uh, uh, coming from the the day, especially when it comes to weather mm -hmm. and other factors. 
other factors that can, have, that can affect. What we are saying now is that uh, one of the areas that also motivates our athletes is the involvement of the spectators, the, the, the fans, the, the Kenyans. The man. The, yes, so that now the, the, if the Kenyans can fill that stadium, mm -hmm. it gives also our athletes the motivation to show mm -hmm. that the Kenyans give them support, that they, the moral support that they require to do well. Mm -hmm. So if we fill that stadium, then I'm sure that Manyala, as he actually had said when he was talking about Kipkeno Classic, yes. that we need the Kenyans to be there so that now it gives them now that extra energy mm. to do well. Mm. And there are other athletes also who will be coming. Uh, the return of uh, uh, Tobago, uh, the, the athlete from Botswana, Botswana yeah. mm -hmm. who actually... Actually, that's an Olympian. He's an Olympian, and also he was a silver medalist, and he's the, the, fastest, uh, the fastest time, mm. the first man at the moment mm. in the 200 meters. Mm. He's going to run the 200, he's not going to contest with uh, Omanyala. And uh, with him, coming mm -hmm. he's just like also returning because he did very well during the world under 20 championship when he won the, the 100 meters mm -hmm. and he's now currently the world record holder for the under 20 in the, that event and talking of our sprinters uh, marco tieno actually is back uh, we know what happened two years ago and he's been racing uh, what kind of a motivation and does it give Umanyala push or a boost even as we go to keep classic and basically what kind of a boost is it for Marco Tieno to compete in this after what he's gone through? Yes, uh, of course it gives him now a chance to, to come back and He's coming back at a higher level. You know, this is a continental tour called event, which is, is actually the, the second tier of, uh, of the athletic series from World Athletics. So it's an opportunity for him to, uh, to showcase his talent. And the fact that he's competing also with Omanyala gives another impetus mm -hmm. for him to, to try to come back. Of course, what happened before is uh, it, what will help him now understand that uh, yes, could have happened that way. Now he wants to come and prove to the world mm -hmm. that yes, he's okay and he can do well without any other assistance from anywhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You've talked of Kenya being known for our prowess on, on the track, and that's true. But look at uh, the YouTube man, as we call him, Julius Diego. He actually made a name for himself in Javelin. And uh, up to now, really, we've not had any strong challenge to, to Julius. He'll be again on the, on the pitch uh, on Saturday. What kind of support probably, or what mechanisms should people like you or Athletics Kenya put in place to ensure we have more talent coming in these field events? We have not been winning a lot of medals. Um, Athletics Kenya has put up, put up structures that we have been following. In fact, yesterday mm. I was in, um, in Rift Valley uh, launching the camps that uh, also during school days the government has really assisted that in funding those camps and that's where we nurture talent, especially the, the field events. Uh, yes, uh, the YouTube man has done his bit. We have also others who are coming up after him. We have a girl also, she was also a product of the youth programs that we have had. She's in the US now mm -hmm. and she has set up uh, a Kenyan record in Chamberlain. Mm -hmm. She drew 57. Mm -hmm. We are hoping that she can qualify oh, for, the, for the Olympics. So we have a system that is working up as a result of the performance, mm -hmm. especially of Manyala and then the setting up of this uh, Kipkeno Classic in this country mm -hmm. as assisted now for our young athletes that might otherwise not get us the chance to compete outside this country, mm -hmm. to compete in Kenya mm -hmm. and get exposed to international uh, uh, competition um, and therefore uh, get the experience. So we have we are really happy that Kipkeno Classic have been very successful, mm -hmm. and we are also thankful for the government for coming, uh, coming in to support this uh, this event, and that is why it has been very successful. And we ask also the the private sector, the mm -hmm. partnership, so that they can also assist the government mm -hmm. in ensuring that sports in this country, especially athletics, continues growing. Mm -hmm. And actually, talking of partnerships, that has been an archive's hill, not just in uh, in most of the federations. You look at football, you look at rugby, the situation we have, and of course, the question is career. How best do we run our federations to ensure more sponsors, as you say, corporate come on board? There's transparency, there's accountability, and this guy can say, ah, there's some good thing happening there at AK. Of course, they're winning the medals and so forth, but we also know the other question we've grappled with as a, nation, as a country, which is doping. Probably going forward, what would you want to see even as we host uh, the meet on, uh, on Saturday at Nyayo? Uh, of course, you have put it very clearly. You know, anything uh, that you do has to be done transparently. Mm -hmm. And the success 
of the federations it depends on how the leadership is run and manage the affairs of the federations and that is where uh, we are focusing on and the problem also that is affecting us is politicization of almost everything that is done mm -hmm. every small thing is politicized so that we have the structures that uh, can assist in that and of course when it comes to issues of doping mm -hmm. uh, the government has come on board to assist uh, the fight against doping by providing uh, five million dollars a year mm -hmm. So that now we set up the systems, the structures that in the next five years we are put so that we control mm -hmm. and follow up any issues that might even uh, increase doping. Mm -hmm. We have now the, the steering committee which, involve, which actually involves the government, involves at least Kenya, involves ADAC and AIU. Mm -hmm. And that team is the now monitoring and ensuring that proper testing, proper education, uh, I and I, which is investigation and intelligence. Mm -hmm. Those are the things that we are doing now. And mm -hmm. you can see that uh, the issue of doping is going down a little bit. Mm -hmm. And by, I'm sure by maybe three, four years, we would be talking about something different. But then education is key. And fight against doping mm -hmm. is not only for at least Kenya, not only for the government. Mm -hmm. It's the community issue. because It's a community issue. Yes. And there have been a uh, question of rogue managers, rogue agents doing ABCD. But because of time, before I let you go, it would be an injustice to the viewer, Mr. Correira, if I don't ask you about Paris 2024. And before you come in, there's a fundamental question. How did AK arrive at the marathon team that's going to represent us there? There's that question. Maybe you can begin with that. Yes, uh, of course. I know every Kenyan wants to see uh, the best athletes to be, uh, I mean, be selected for the Paris. Mm. And it was a very simple fact. You know, you go to the structure, the performance of every athlete that has been there. Mm. The, we go by the times. If you look at the times of all those have been selected, of course, all of them are in the top ten. Mm. So that's the way you go. You, we selected the first top ten, mm. and then now we narrowed it to five, mm. and most of them and are actually in the top tier of our marathon. So we see now, when we have selected five, we want to see how they are performing during the, this, uh, like Boston today, and the other marathons like London, which is coming next week. Mm. Then we make out the final one, the three, that is remaining. So it's a process. Kenyans must understand that in this country, we have so many good marathoners, and sometimes it becomes difficult mm. to, be, to pick one. Mm. They have talked about one athlete whom they, are, they wanted to be in the team. Mm. But then before, Mm. Uh, announcing the team, mm -hmm. uh, the federation contacts every athlete to ask whether they are willing to, to participate, to participate to if they are selected. Mm. And some of them, maybe you don't see their name, is because they decline and say maybe they are not able to do that or they were injured. Mm. So that is how it is. And we use the best possible way of selecting our athletes, and it is by ranking. So that in, each and every person can go to the ranking of the marathon worldwide, and then they can find all the names which are there. Uh, Korir, because of time, your final uh, remarks probably, you can face that camera and maybe address the nation. Uh, your message to the fans, should they come to Nyayo as we go to Keep Kano Classic? Maybe you can do that in 20 seconds. Yes, uh, I think I want to ask the Kenyans to turn up in large numbers. We all talk about uh, athletics being the number one sport in this country. We love our athletes running. We see them watching in marathons, uh, competing in New York, Boston, and everywhere. But then this is now the homecoming of athletes. We have the Pino Classic, one of the best meets in the world, which is also ranked. We have organized a very good event. I'm asking the Kenyans to turn up in large numbers to come and watch that event right here at home in Nairobi. Turn up in large numbers because if you love your heartless, come and see them. Come and see Omanyala. Come and see Wanyonyi. Come and see uh, people like maybe Fate might not be running, but we have others also at the top. Of course, our queen from, uh, we call her Kisi Express, Mary Mora, is also mm. going to run. Why don't you come and watch her running here before she goes to the Olympics and wins a gold medal for us? You are so eloquent. In fact, you are threatening to take my job. <laughs> Thank but you. Uh, I won't allow you to do that. <laughs> That's Barnaba <clears throat> Korir, basically the race director. We are talking about Keep Keino Classic, the fifth edition. We are hosting this Saturday at the Nyayo National Stadium. So make a date. Go there, cheer the boys, cheer the girls as they hunt for glory on home soil. This is Sporty Monday. We take a short commercial break, but don't go away. When we return, we delve deep into the EPL and of course go to Bonn, Germany, where Bayer Leverkusen are the new kings in town after being crowned the Bundesliga champions for the very first time in their history. Stay tuned. <laughs>